to make uh, things easier, let me tell you that my very basic agenda, which is not nature versus culture, but very much nature and culture, is telltale, is very much seen in our rich cultural practices of Northeast. And I think I would like to begin with Assam again, because that's where I am basically, um, you know, my, I'm from. So in Assam, uh, if you people have heard about Bihu, now Bihu just doesn't mean dancing, okay? Well, dance is a part of Bihu, but Bihu is the festival of SMEs. By the way, the word Bihu is derived from the Sanskrit word Bishu, and that's exactly the festival in down south. So Vishu and Bihu are same, the Sanskrit term, because in SMEs, we do not have the word sha, it is replaced by her. So B Vishu beca becomes Bihu. Vishu is the festival celebrated in, uh, I think, uh, Telugu, the community of Telugu, right? Now, Bihu, there are three kinds. Asumis New Year, Rongali Bihu. Kongali Bihu. Okay, Rongali Bihu, wrong, okay, colors, Rangali. I think that's how it will be pronounced. In Asumis, we call it Rongali. Kongali Bihu, and I think it will be pronounced as Kangali. Kangal, right, broke, Kangali Bihu. See, we have also something to celebrate about when we are broke. So it's okay to be broke and to, you know, uh, have nothing and still celebrate. Anyway, the third is something called Mag Bihu or Bhogali, Bhog. Now, Rongali or Rangali, <laughs> Rongali Bihu is the Bihu, which is our new year, April 15th. That's filled with happiness and color and love and everything possible. You know, everything is happy and bright and optimist, Rongali. Then comes Kongali. Kongali is when the Bhoral, or as we say, the place where, uh, you know, we put our um, harvest, it's all done because people are, people do not have harvest. So it's an empty burral and empty uh, granary. So it is Kongali, Kongal, but Kongali doesn't mean us to question or doesn't mean that we will rebuke mother nature. We know that mother nature will give us when she has to give us. So we, again, even this Kongali phase, we still celebrate, we still pray to her. Right, and then we have the bhogali. So after kangali phase, there is bhogali bhog, which happens in January, and that's about celebrating whatever Anna she has given after the phase of kangali. So Mother Nature becomes Annapurna, and I have to mention Annapurna, though Earth or nature is similarized with feminine energy, Manapurna need not always be a female. Most of the top chefs of a country are males. So Manapurna, if is impressed with anyone, can bless anyone. Could be a male, female, transgender, whosoever, right? So Annapurna is just not feminine. I wanted to make this very clear now. Uh, let me just quickly pick up a, a quotation from Alexa Atella, who says, I believe that cuisine is the most important link between nature and culture, unquote. So she rightly says that cuisine, right? Now, what is cuisine? A cuisine is a style of um, uh, cooking characterized by distinctive ingredients, techniques, and dishes, and usually associated with a specific culture or a geographic region. And regional food preparation, traditions, customs, and ingredients often combine to create dishes unique to a particular region. I'm sure all of us will acknowledge this. Now, so how is climate change, the present uh, you know, ecolo ecological crisis affecting the people in Northeast particularly? So again, like other parts of India, the Northeastern part of India is also this uh, picture cue, you know, scenario of flora, fauna, and everything. But as plants and animals used in traditional practices or sacred ceremonies become less available, tribal culture and ways of life can be, and that definitely is, you know, being greatly affected. The environment uh, influences people's behavior and motivation to act. Uh, the environment influences mood too. For example, the result of... Um, Several research studies reveal that rooms with bright light, both natural and artificial, can improve health outcomes such as depression, agitation, and sleep. 
So, uh, so we do acknowledge that, you know, there has been a huge climatic change even in the Northeastern belt. Now, our question or our concern is, is there any example of climate change situation in Northeast particularly, which I would like to take up? And I think I would like to uh, bring our gaze to the climate change induced hydro hazards and its impact on the tribal communities in Majuli, the largest river island of Brahmaputra River Basin. The island has been experiencing recurrent floods. By the way, Majuli is also the place where uh, our Vaishnavite uh, 15th century Shrimanta Shankar Dev's uh, you know, uh, culture is very well preserved and sustained. So this island has been experiencing uh, recurrent floods, erosion, and stiltation, which has distressed the socioeconomic foundation and livelihood of the missing and indigenous community of Northeast India, leading out to migration from the land. The indicators selected to capture the vulnerability of the island to climate change are dependency ratio, occurrence of natural hazards, and coping methods, income of household, and livelihood application. So, uh, you know, the Majuli River Island is really in a sad state, and that it, it has really been impacted. If you observe, if you see, you will understand. You know, if you watch some videos, you'll like exactly understand what I'm trying to say. And as I have said, Majuli is the center of Vaishnavism, and hot draws in Northeast India. And you know, it is said that with Majuli breaking down, a part of a culture too is breaking down. So that's very much there. Now, uh, you know, there's this uh, technology or method called SALT, S-A-L-T, which um, is a short form for sloping agriculture, land technology, farming method that has been, um, in, uh, that has been introduced in Mizoram. And 80% of people are engaged in this salt uh, farming method. And the Northeast uh, Slow Food and Agro Biodiversity Society has really been working and uh, encouraging people, you know, the benefits of um, the indigenous food or the benefits of the local. And I think, I think that the shift need not be from carnivorous to herbivorous or omnivorous to uh, herbivorous, you know, the shifts should be from um, carnivorous or herbivorous or omnivorous to locovorous. Locovorous, uh, in a way, the food products that are locally produced, you know, that should be the uh, shift, maybe. Something about sustainable agriculture, conservation of natural resources, green revolution, modern technological developments to enhance the productivity of crops is something which they really are looking for and are striving for. And uh, the Forest Research Center for Livelihood Extension, which is called as FRCLE, has also shared that the no knowledge, you know, which is, um, see, Northeast is very rich in bamboos, right? Bamboo shoot is also a very, very popular uh, ingredient or delicacy in our uh, food item. So this knowledge of different usage of bamboo and how it could be a tool for the development sector needs to be focused on. The uh, methods of very low cost method of treatment of bamboo and showed the usefulness of treating bamboo say in the construction of houses. The equipment used for such treatment, um, they said was definitely uh, not very expensive. And these houses could be easily affordable for the poor and can last for nearly 70 years without any maintenance. So that's some of the concerns or ideas, you know, focus on bamboo. Uh, which needs to be focused. I mean, Assam, Nagaland, Mizoram, you just name it, Manipur, very, very, you know, blessed with bamboo. So um, now the climate action has always occupied a backseat when it uh, comes to choosing between development and environmental protection, but the events of the world are focusing us to rethink the time we have left. If the climate crisis is not acted upon, the planet will hurtle towards an apocalypse. The political and social events that are transpiring certainly makes one feel that way. However, thankfully, you know, fortunately, the rising awareness through protests, especially among the youth, provide us with a silver of hope. And I think one contemporary er environment uh, movements that are fighting for climate justice in Northeast is the Safe Dehing Patkai. Now, this safe, uh, this move, this um, uh, movement, you know, this Safe Dehing Patkai movement began as a protest against the 
the April 2020 decision by the National Board Wildlife to allow Northeastern coal fields to do open cast mining. So RTI, a file by activists, revealed that CIL has already been mining since 2003. And um, the elephant reserve already suffers from logging, uh, hunting, uh, or illegal mining. So that has been something which, you know, this organization, this movement has really been doing. In these relations with the Eastern neighborhood have improved far flung in this proactive role in building a common market with an ambitious but re realistic connectivity programs is the key focus of uh, Act East, East policy. Uh, Assam government has opened a new department called Act East Department. International organizations have been entrusted to work with the Northeastern states on Act East Department. Assam's uh, chief minister has been following up AEP projects personally. While this is an encouraging development, other northeastern states, except perhaps Tripura and Manipur, are yet to initiate the big ticket measures to strengthen these Act East uh, activities. If connectivity driven AEP has to succeed, you know, Northeast has to strengthen its internal connectivity first. So that's something there. Like railway connectivity, you know, for instance, has progressed, no doubt, but we still uh, have a long way to go that what can we do from the food sustainability uh, way. So perhaps one of the way out could be, you know, a contest, a local contest in the village frame, a recipe contest uh, in the grassroots level in which rural women are mobilized in a participatory manner to demonstrate their culinary creativities in making traditional foods using the best possible options from indigenous biodiversity. So uh, the say the first few contestants or the awardees are reward, can be rewarded in each village in a well-organized formal meeting and the winners are then uh, you know they could be further taken up into uh, uh, planning of biodiversity conservation so these are certain ways to perhaps include or encourage local food to not go out of fashion a lot of such indigenous um, plants, be it medicinal herbs and all are not documented. So I think it is about time that all these things ought to be documented because the minute it is documented, they are recorded. I think this inclusiveness where one community is not really, uh, you know, insecure about the other community, but happily sharing his or her traditional indigenous knowledge and seeing that how collectively Northeast can grow up uh, would definitely lead to the non-dualism or the Advaitic uh, form of environment and man being inclusive to uh, nature. That ought to be very, very clear, firstly, that the need versus greed ought to be very well settled. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, we received one question through the chat. Uh, it's by Prakya. Prakya, if you're here, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, hi, I wanted to ask, um, what do you think cities like Delhi or other metropolitan cities can take from the Northeast? Yeah, thank you, Prakya, for your question. You know, uh, there's so much of, I wouldn't really call it give and take, but give and receive. Uh, give and take is whatever, give and receiving is uh, more uh, well placed, I feel, because as much as Delhi and other metropolitan cities can receive from Northeast, there are also many things that Northeast can receive from, you know, Delhi and other places. Now, having said this, I must mention you that a traditional uh, SMS diet, for instance, like, see, again, um, being from Assam, a lot of my students ask me, you know, that, ma'am, you have very good skin, uh, you have this, you have that. And I very proudly, I flaunt, you know, that's to do with my DNA or that's to do with the food that I take. Now, we are not someone who were brought up in two minutes noodles culture. We were, again, not someone who were brought up in mall culture, you know. Our, uh, usually a typical Assamese Indian household, you would see we have food in the form of car, uh, which is the pre-food, uh, uh, you know, uh, delicacy that has to be taken that in a way ex um, triggers the digestive juices, you know, which is called as car. And we have um, in our diet, you know, we have everything which is made of, um, um, which are sour, which are bitter. It is not only sweet, sweet. So as much as there are car carbohydrates, there is also protein, there are vitamins there. So we, make it a point that our diet has to have, uh, you know, you call it whatever, palak, spinach, anything. So that's a very wholesome meal that we take. 
So we are not really dependent much on supplements, unlike uh, here where you have to be dependent on supplements because the quality of food is, you know, the crops is not that great. So this is something we have seen our parents following, our great grandparents following, though of course me in Delhi, it is not possible for me to, you know, create that kind of a meal. But that that's how usually, you know, we start with something called car and even our ending has to be something like, for instance, card. Almost all of us have to have card. Uh, that's again, we all know the benefits of CARD. So instead of probiotics, for us, CARD is only probiotic. We, we are not really dependent on probiotic supplement or whatever, you know, Kajol and others really advertises for, for us, CARD is enough. So yeah, uh, so pizzas, and I, I also I must mention here pizza and you know, all those whatever, fast food. Like I have two children, but even at home, or maybe I don't know, I'm a strict mother. It is like, you know, whatever has been cooked, you have to eat. There is no substitute of uh, food for fast food. Fast food is like, you know, only when, okay, there's something celebratory about. So fast food like pizza could never be a replacement of dinner at my place. So these are certain maybe small things. Mothers have to be strict. After all, she's done Napurna. <laughs> People have to abide, children have to abide at times. Not that pizzas are not allowed, but yes, occasionally they are. So I think these tips if followed, every household will stop depending on supplements, I personally feel. Like bamboos, for instance, which I have said, you know, uh, jute. So um, replacing weight um, plastics and by making jute bags, uh, because jute and all are very, very much there in our North here. So uh, replacing uh, fancy bags with jute bags, or maybe also, um, you know, like uh, people have been talking about paper cups and all, but also I would like to uh, say that, um, you know, those barricades, I think, which are used of late, I think if uh, recently that come in the news that in uh, the Nagaland had uh, furnished the Delhi government with the bamboo barricades. So that gift or the uh, Adan Pradhan, you know, of one state to the other. So these are certain sustainable tips. So not the iron barricades, but the proper bamboo barricades, which are studying themselves. So that's, I think already the Northeast has uh, paved the way for Delhi and for the places to pick up. So uh, it's a healthy exchange where as much as uh, the non-Northeast learn from Northeast, the Northeast too should in a way, because as long as there's dialogue possible, there is life possible. The minute it becomes a monologue, I think there's stagnation and there's death. So for sustainable development, I think it is definitely uh, the jute bag and you know bamboo uh, barricades instead of those regular barricades. That's what I would like to suggest. Dr. Ananavara for being here and guiding us so well. And it was a beautiful time well spent. Thank you so much. And Special thanks to Dr. Archana Barwa as well, who gave her insights and um, valuable insights. And thank you so much for everyone who, you know, made time for today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, the entire team of Advaita. Thank you, um, Ridu. Uh, thank you, you know, everyone for even having thought of uh, yeah, not theme as important as this. Uh, and I. Needless to say, I, I am feeling uh, as much as honored, humbled too, that this, and if this is a generation that we have, I think Northeast is in safe hands. So thank you so much from the entire, uh, I think, region of Northeast too. And I thoroughly enjoyed my session. Hopefully people who had attended, you know, did gather some, if not completely, some insight on Northeast and sustainable development. And I hopefully I did justice to the theme that was given. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you.